What a beautiful choice. To jump or not to jump on the next Cheers. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight from Washington, Ted Koppel. It did an admiral's aid against the U.S. Navy establishment having to do with charges of sexual harassment at a naval aviators convention. That scandal this afternoon reached all the way to the top. Navy Secretary Lawrence Garrett handed in his resignation. Here's the story from Pentagon correspondent Bob Zelnick. Secretary Garrett's resignation came in a letter to the president and is effective immediately. Garrett said, I accept full responsibility for the post-tailhook management of my department. But Garrett added that in attending and addressing the tailhook convention, I neither saw nor engaged in any offensive conduct. Garrett has come under fire on three fronts. First, Lieutenant Paula Coughlin revealed that she had been sexually assaulted to one of Garrett's aides on the morning after the incident and many wondered whether Garrett knew early on of its severity. Second, not only was Garrett on a patio outside the corridor where Navy pilots formed a gauntlet to molest females, but he visited one of the hospitality suites where raucous behavior occurred. Third, when the Navy released a report on its initial investigation of the incident, it omitted more than 50 pages, including those referring to Garrett's presence at the scene. Last week, Garrett urged the Pentagon's Inspector General to take over both the investigation of the tailhook incident itself and of the Navy's alleged cover-up. Today, the Inspector General ordered the Navy to stop all disciplinary procedures until his own investigation is completed. The IG is worried that senior Navy officers who may be shielding the guilty will close cases early with a gentle slap on the wrist. At the same time, the Senate Armed Services Committee has held up all Navy and Marine Corps officer promotions until the Pentagon certifies that the officers had no involvement in tailhook or its cover-up. That cover-up was designed to protect the old boy aviator network. It has now become the Navy's supreme embarrassment, with control lost over promotions and the investigation itself, and now with the Navy Secretary forced to resign. Bob Zelnick, ABC News at the Pentagon. Secretary of State Baker today called the slaughter of thousands of civilians in the Bosnian capital of Sarajevo a humanitarian nightmare. But at the same time, the Bush administration backed away from the idea of using military force to deliver emergency humanitarian aid to the city. What to do was the subject of a top-level meeting at the White House. Here's ABC's John McCarthy. The unannounced White House meeting lasted more than two hours as the president and his top national security advisors struggled with how to deal with Yugoslavia at a time when all options appear to be losers. Secretary Baker has been pushing for an emergency airlift of food with armed escorts to avert mass starvation. Defense Secretary Cheney and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs Powell have warned that could draw the U.S. into a quagmire. Earlier in the day, Secretary Baker admitted that the U.N. resolution which provides for the food says nothing about armed escorts. My understanding of that resolution is it does not authorize the use of force. A tougher Security Council resolution that did authorize use of force would be extremely difficult to get. U.S. officials say China and Russia have already made it clear they would oppose it. As European leaders met today in Lisbon, they faced the same frustrating questions. Everyone is ready to participate in an emergency airlift, but not if it means shooting their way into Sarajevo to deliver the food and medicine. So one tactic by the Bush administration is to try to frighten Serbian President Milosevic into stopping his siege of Sarajevo by making him believe he may soon face some kind of armed intervention. That tactic could begin with a naval blockade off the coast of what used to be Yugoslavia. But what the Bush administration does not want is to put the life of even one American soldier on the line in this election year by putting them into the middle of a fight they might not win. John McCarthy, ABC News, Washington. Why an American-European relief mission to Sarajevo could be so dangerous, all you need to do is see what the situation is like at the Sarajevo airport. ABC's Mike Lee got close to that airport today. This is the daily madness which the U.S. or any other Western military force would have to eliminate if it were to begin an airlift of food and water into Sarajevo. 
This small United Nations force drives across the airport runway most days, but does not have the political authority or the firepower to make a ceasefire stick. UN convoys have been fired upon, even today. The UN commander here is Major General Lewis McKenzie. It's an extremely complicated and messy situation, and there's not a pilot in the world uh, that would land at this airport under the current circumstances. The Sarajevo airport is a perfect place for an ambush against an international intervention force. It is flanked on all sides by rival groups of gunmen, so the runway is in an almost constant crossfire. The airport is also surrounded by hills and mountains, which are controlled by Serbian forces who could use their heavy artillery to attack any aircraft which landed. An airstrike might eliminate some Serbian positions in the hills, but that would leave the risk that the Serbs might then switch to hit and run guerrilla tactics against the airport. Earlier today, we were in the hills above Sarajevo, and despite reports of a new ceasefire offered by the Serbs, it is clear that neither side has stopped shooting at one another inside the city, and that the Serbian forces have yet to lift their siege on Sarajevo. Mike Lee, ABC News, Belgrade. There is also a civil war going on in what used to be the Soviet Union, and Russian troops are involved. Those are Russian soldiers who were left behind in the former Soviet Republic of Moldova. They've been fighting for control of a region where many ethnic Russians still live. Several hundred people have been killed there during the past week. In a moment, the Supreme Court says religious groups like the Hare Krishnas do not have a right to ask for money in airports. A scathing attack against the Los Angeles Police Department from the human rights group Amnesty International. And our person of the week, a role model taking on the tobacco industry. In our universe, there is always the unknown, the unpredictable. All we can do is prepare for it. AT&T is now installing FASTAR. It can detect a cable cut instantly, so 800 calls can get back in minutes instead of hours. We can send flowers for any occasion, anywhere, but only if our 800 service is up and running. Our 800 service isn't just a phone line, it's a lifeline. I miss you. AT&T has the most reliable 800 service, period. AT&T, call us. You could ease up a little. Table for two in about five minutes. Mr. Douglas, I have your table. But you're not gonna. You could stop being a perfectionist. But you're not gonna. You're not gonna change because of heartburn and you don't have to. There's something new that's like no ordinary antacid. New Maalox Heartburn Relief. It stops the burning and helps keep it from coming back. So get on with life like you're gonna live it. New Maalox Heartburn Relief is made for you. An important ruling on free speech from the Supreme Court today. It concerns a problem that anyone who has ever walked through an airline terminal knows about firsthand. The presence of people not there to board a plane, but to deliver a political or religious message. In two decisions, the court said handing out literature is fine, but soliciting money goes too far. Here's ABC's Tom Foreman in Denver. More than a million people pass through the nation's airports every day. That is why for years airport concourses have been prime targets for religious, social and political groups seeking donations. Today, some were very unhappy that the court equated their actions with harassment. It's uh, not a harassment whatsoever. People can say yes or no. That's America. You know, someone can come up to you in a public place and, and present something. You can say yes or no. So to say that we can't ask for those donations, it's going to severely restrict our ability to share our message with other people. So it is a free country, you know, if they, as long as they don't push it that, that far. Donation to the Reverend Moon. Pushing too far for donations has made for comedy in the movies, but many airline passengers say the approaches are often persistent to the point of intimidation. People have the right to say and do what they want, but I don't think they have the right to hassle people. It's usually when I'm in an airport, I'm in a hurry to get wherever I'm going, and I don't have time for that. The court says groups must still be allowed to talk to people about their beliefs and to hand out literature. But without the ability to collect donations, some airport officials believe many groups will leave. Dick Jones says he will not leave, even if he has to remove his donation can. I've been here 10 years, I'm not moving unless God moves me. The court said solicitors use airports to target people for coercion. Today, the court said they cannot do that anymore. Tom Foreman, ABC News, Denver.
There was another important ruling from the court today, this one having to do with school desegregation. The high court has dealt any number of times with segregation at the elementary and high school levels. Today, for the first time, it addressed segregation at the college level. Simply getting rid of the old Jim Crow laws, said the court, is not enough. Here's Tim O'Brien. Until James Meredith entered Ole Miss under court order in 1962, colleges in Mississippi were segregated. Many of them remain predominantly one race today. Black families went to court arguing that most black students still attend educationally inferior, mostly black schools. The legal question is this. What must Mississippi and other states do to desegregate higher education? Is it enough to just stop discriminating, to adopt admissions policies that are racially neutral? In what may be its most important civil rights ruling of the term, the Supreme Court today said no. Much more is required. The state might have to spend more money to upgrade predominantly black schools or consider other options, such as moving some academic programs from white campuses to black ones. The state may also have to abandon its strict reliance on admission test scores. The court also said if Mississippi could not integrate the historically black schools, it had no obligation to support what it called exclusively black enclaves. The court's only black justice, Clarence Thomas, warned it would be ironic to say the least if the institutions that sustain blacks during segregation were themselves destroyed in an effort to combat segregation. Although the implications for historically black schools are unclear, civil rights leaders tonight praised the Supreme Court for a ruling backed by the Bush administration that could change the face of many college campuses throughout the South. Tim O'Brien, ABC News, Jackson, Mississippi. The nation's trains are running again, passengers and freight. The Ringling Brothers Circus probably qualifies as a little of both. They started rolling after President Bush signed the back-to-work order in the middle of the night. The unions and the railroads will have about a month to reach a new contract with binding arbitration at the end if they don't. In economic news, Americans are making more money and spending it even faster. Personal income was up three-tenths of a percent in May, the fourth gain in a row. Consumer spending was up even more, five-tenths of a percent. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials lost about a point and a half to close at 32.82. Trading was moderate. That brought the loss for the week to nearly three points. We'll have more in a moment. To survive out here, you need a rifle, a friend like Elvis here, and of course, Domino's Pizza. It's our 99 cent carryout special. With any regular priced pizza, get a one topping medium for 99 cents. Nobody knows like Domino's, right, Elvis? How you like pizza at home? Read it. Read it. Now's the time to buy built to last appliances from Frigidaire. Because you'll find big rebates on Frigidaire refrigerators, washers, ranges, and more. Like this energy-efficient refrigerator with CFC reduced insulation. It has adjustable gallon-deep bins, so big and tall things stay out of the way. Plus lots of adjustable glass shelves and clear-view compartments. Best of all, it's not just a fridge, it's a Frigidaire. So hop on over to your Frigidaire dealer and pick up something new for your pan. Don't get hit by an annual fee. Carry the card that doesn't charge one. And keep yourself out of the hole. It pays to discover. You make me feel so young. Promise Extra Light Spread. Half the saturated fat and calories of margarine and a taste you'll enjoy with all your heart. You make me feel so young. Now, Promise Extra Light in sticks. Get heart smart. This is the time to use Ace Paint. Hey, Ace knows what it takes to make great paint because Ace makes its own. Ace Paint, top quality in every drop, guaranteed. Ace five-star acrylic latex house paint is just $8.97 a gallon. Another reason Ace is the place for you. The city of Los Angeles has sworn in its new police chief, Willie Williams, who was the chief of Philadelphia's police force. He is the first black to hold the job in Los Angeles. One of the first pieces of news he had to face, a scathing report on the LAPD from the human rights group Amnesty International. Here's ABC's Judy Muller. The report is doubly damning, and a year-long study of both the L.A. Police Department and the Sheriff's Department, Amnesty International said officers and deputies regularly use excessive force out of all proportion to the threat posed by the victims, often in violation of international standards. At times, it has amounted to torture 
or cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment, where people have been beaten, tasered, shot, or attacked by police dogs. It is, frankly, an appalling record. The report concludes that blacks and Latinos are most often the victims of police abuse, something that came as no surprise on the streets. It's never just come up, you know, and how you doing, uh, you broke this law, it's always get out the car and you get searched and it's, it's like you're a, a criminal for no reason. The amnesty investigation was based on 60 lawsuits in which the city or county agreed to settle out of court and on interviews with law enforcement officials, including police chief Daryl Gates. The report's release coincided with Gates's last day on the job. It did not seem to disturb him. Does anybody pay attention to Amnesty International anymore? Uh, you know, these are a bunch of uh, do-gooders and liberals. Uh, they came in, we cooperated with them fully, but that doesn't make it. We knew what the report was going to say. The sheriff knew what the report was going to say. As to who takes us seriously, um, I think the United States government tends to take us very seriously when we report on other countries, and I hope we'll be taken equally seriously when we're saying things about the United States. Amnesty says that until Los Angeles cracks down on what it calls unchecked brutality by officers and deputies, it will undermine America's credibility as the standard bearer for international human rights. Judy Muller, ABC News, Los Angeles. We'll have more news in a moment. Come on, Raisin Bran is Raisin Bran. What's this? Total Raisin Bran, huh? Big crisp flakes, lots of raisins. Mm. Uh, this is amazing. Total Raisin Bran has 100% uh, of lots of vitamins and minerals. Mm. And Kellogg's has only one. I'm surprised. Total Raisin Bran, the Raisin Bran with the total difference. I just assumed they were all the same, but they're not. Most people think paint. <laughs> But then again, most people aren't professional painters. There's only one paint this good, and there's only one place you can get it. The pros know. Ask Sherwin Williams. This castle once had 26 bathrooms. It'd be nice if one of them still worked. Why? What if my diarrhea comes back? Relax. You took my Imodium AD caplets. Just once. I usually take the pink stuff two or three times. Imodium AD is much better. Imodium AD caplets are so effective, they often work in one dose. Instead of dose after dose after dose, like the pink stuff. Ready to go? Before the sunset. Imodium AD for diarrhea, the choice for one dose relief. Everybody needs some money sometime. Only Western Union can get money to over 16,000 locations in minutes. Somebody Nobody else even comes close. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Did you know that some insurance companies specify imitation parts for GM cars and trucks? It's true, and many don't measure up to GM standards. So listen to a guy who's been through a fender or two. And insist on genuine GM parts. The former ambassador to the Soviet Union, Malcolm Toon, says that when Boris Yeltsin claimed there may still be American prisoners of war alive in Russian prisons, he misspoke. Mr. Toon has been in Russia investigating the claim and says there is no evidence to support it. In South Africa, new questions about whether last week's massacre in the black township of Boipatong was carried out by members of the South African police. The African National Congress says yes and has broken off talks with the government over the issue. ABC's Don Cladstrup on what government investigators were told today. In the most startling development yet, a security guard testified before a government commission today that the Boipatong massacre was carried out by former members of an elite military unit known as the Kafut. He was told this, he said, by one of the 40 former Kafuts based at this coal mine. The Kafut, which fought as foreign commandos with the South African Army, were absorbed into the South African police two years ago. Ten days ago, according to the testimony, former members of this unit drove from this barracks to Boipatong and carried out the killings. Today, police emphatically deny that they or anyone formerly attached to the Kafut unit were involved in the massacre. This unit is um, engaged in crime prevention and detection and is mostly used as 
Trekkers. The former commando who allegedly told the security guard that they did take part in the massacre denies having said that. Nevertheless, the controversy has fueled suspicions among residents of Boipatang that police were involved. They are the ones who are killing, who are killing the people. Dozens of residents have said they saw whites with darkened faces and police vehicles in the vicinity when the massacre occurred. The evidence is so real that for them to even suggest now uh, that they never turned a blind eye or weren't involved is ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. That's what the African National Congress said when it broke off talks with the government. Although police call the charges utter nonsense, they hold grave implications for the government if proved true. Don Cladstrup, ABC News, Johannesburg. In Israel today, Yitzhak Shamir says if he had won the election, he would have drawn out the peace talks with the Palestinians for 10 years, while hundreds of thousands of Jews moved to the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. That, he said, is the only way to prevent a Palestinian state. Outside Paris today, hundreds of French farmers drove their tractors to Euro Disneyland and kept thousands of tourists from getting in. The farmers are angry because the government is going to reduce their subsidies. They say they chose Disneyland because it symbolizes America, which has put a lot of pressure on European governments to give less aid to their farmers. We'll be back in just a moment. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and the Person of the Week are brought to you by Scope. Morning Breath. As soon as I have my coffee, it's all gone. Whether you admit it or not, it's a problem. Okay, I have morning breath, but it doesn't bother anyone. Don't be so sure. Mine's not so bad. Morning breath's not as bad as you think. It's worse. So get Scope. Its two powerful ingredients kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Ah. Mm. Was my morning breath really that bad? Mm. There's no denying morning breath, so save your breath with scope. In our universe, there was always the unknown, the unpredictable. All we can do is prepare for it. We actually have an air patrol watching over our cables. At AT&T, we go to great lengths to protect your 800 service. Hello, 800 flowers. We can send flowers for any occasion, anytime, anywhere. But if our 800 service goes down, we're reminded that our business is very perishable. AT&T is installing our new FastR technology now to protect businesses. FastR can detect a cable cut instantly and design a solution around it. 800 calls can get back in minutes instead of hours. Dear Mom, I miss you. Love, Sally. AT&T has the most reliable 800 service, period. In this business, opportunity doesn't knock, it calls. And that's why we chose AT&T 800 service. AT&T, call us. How will President Bush win back his popularity? We'll ask him and Mrs. Bush the questions you want answered. Are you sorry that you ever said, read my lips, no new taxes? A 2020 exclusive, tonight. And finally this evening, our person of the week. It was a rocky week for the tobacco industry. First, the Supreme Court ruled that tobacco makers are not immune to lawsuits by people whose health is damaged by smoking. And then the city of Oakland voted to ban all smoking in restaurants, a trend throughout the country. Image has been a great concern for the tobacco industry. The person we choose this week was once one of the industry's leading image makers, but no longer got a company that is systematically poisoning our society and I think anybody who systematically poisons our society should be brought to their knees. We're talking about tobacco which is our nation's number one disgrace. Dave Gerlitz is talking about his former bosses in the tobacco industry. For most of the 1980s Gerlitz's picture was plastered on cigarette ads across America. I'm no better than a drug pusher, I'm no better than an accessory to a crime and I have this personal beast inside of me called guilt and fear and anger. I'm a murderer and, and I, I don't want to do it anymore. Almost 400,000 Americans die from smoking every year. Three to five thousand children under the age of 18 take up the habit every day. Smoking cigarettes will take away the good breath that you can breathe. Dave Gerlitz is a one-man anti-smoking crusade. It is the children he tries hardest to reach and he says so do the tobacco companies. 
These 5,000 kids are now the food supply that these parasites, meaning the tobacco industry, feeds off of. Now, I don't think a child should be held accountable for a lifetime addiction to a drug if they were enticed, encouraged, lured, tricked, schemed, and targeted. Dave Gerlitz was raised in Pensacon, New Jersey. He began smoking when he was only 13. For a boy who was constantly teased for being grossly overweight, smoking was a way to be accepted. The weight led to health problems. And when he was 29, doctors ordered Gerlitz to lose 75 pounds. The new, slimmer Dave Gerlitz quit his job as a truck driver and decided to try his hand at modeling and acting. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Cigarette advertising was banned on television in 1971. When Dave Gerlitz started making the audition rounds in 19...